So the first one I want to talk about is Antoinette Cooper. Uh, healing our trauma heals the world. And what I did is <laughs> when I did this course, uh, my wife said, you've got to have like action items for each one of the the ones that you attend. And and that's what I did is I wrote down action items for each. And so I wanted to uh, share that with you today. So the first action item is accept healing as part of the process of being human. Second, allow your kids to cry and build our capacity to handle their emotional outbursts. And three, don't just go and read stuff on the internet. Commit the time that is needed for self-healing and commit the time for family healing by finding a safe community to share vulnerable stories. Now, if your experience with grandparents causes more trauma, then spend less time with them. We are not more powerful than our environment. These are powerful parenting statements that we got from Antoinette Cooper that I want to share with you today. Now, if we look at the core of reconciliation, we are dealing with trauma. And unless we come up with a vocabulary to talk about and create support around different types of trauma, it's going to continue to silence the trauma that, that is happening within. So Antoinette had to let go of bringing her mom along. Uh, ultimately, you can't force someone else to transform. In this Parenting Decolonized Conference, Antoinette, in her session about trauma healing the world, said that silence is the tool of oppressors because it prevents healing. So I remember when I was a kid, maybe, I don't know if you had these, the yo mama jokes, yo mama so fat jokes. Um, she's saying that these kind of jokes can be a form of violence. Because if you were a black parent, like you would, you would feel this like in, deeply insulted by these. And, and the question is like, we are so used to this type of violence. Like, who could we be if we were not, if we didn't have this violence anymore? Um, it's such a part of our culture. Uh, we're not even sure who we are without this. So if you overcome trauma, you become a vessel for creation. You know how we, we've been talking all this time about moving from sedation to relation to creation. But what if dealing with the moving from sedation to relation required us to deal with our trauma. If you dwell in trauma, trauma, uh, you'll never think outside of the status quo. And that is really interesting to me is like this box that we live in, this status quo, Antoinette is saying, is because we live in trauma and we don't know how to get out of this trauma. And so when it comes to reimagining what reconciliation looks like. The question is, who's doing the imagining? It can't come from the oppressors only, like the people who are causing the problems to start with. And when we refer to this, we, we sometimes think, oh, this must be like certain cultural groups. No. Parenting is passing the baton. And the question is, what wounds do you pass on to the next generation? Our children cannot be their authentic selves if we, the parents, first are still traumatized. And so we have to take away social emotional healing as this negative thing. It has the same continuity as breathing in and out. It's a part of the human experience. So healings like breathing bringing a healthy expectation to it. It's like, hey, I, I need some time for my mental health. I need some time for healing. This is really good. One of the things I loved about Antoinette Cooper's uh, presentation was that she said, healing honestly is a natural state of our body. Um, if you think about it, like if we physically get hurt, um, like we, let's say we have a cut somewhere on our, our arms or our hands somewhere, it'll start to heal. We'll see it healing. It's a natural state of our bodies. 
And it's a natural state of our emotions and it's a natural state of our spirit. It is what every part of our body wants. And so what she explained, uh, what Antoinette explained, and this is the first, like the first session that I really, like, oh, it really blew me away. Uh, it's not about what are you doing to heal. It's about what are you doing to interrupt that healing. Don't suppress, express. She's saying practice repair regularly and intentionally. And oh, I thought that was so powerful. That was so powerful. I mean, she said that if a child is crying, let them cry. We, inter we interrupt these natural ways of healing all the time. We tell kids, don't cry. Don't cry. Stop crying. But if we interrupt and we build our, like if we look at this interrupt and we build our own capacity to be with the way that we naturally heal, um, we will be much more powerful in terms of our, our own dealing with self-trauma. Um, sometimes this means that we have to build up our skill set. We, maybe we need to do more meditation. Maybe we need to think a little bit more before we react. Maybe it's doing journaling. Uh, one phrase that I, I loved from the conference was that crying isn't the hurt. It's the healing from the hurt. And so if you're crying, you're healing. So congratulations. It's a good thing, not a bad thing. And so how can we create as parents this oasis where children feel safe? We got to look for community where people are developing this capacity for hard conversations. And that's the problem. It's like, where do you go on the internet to find a community of people asking, having hard conversations. And wounds happen not just on an individual level, but also on a collective level. Like for example, um, Antoinette said the black body was traumatized when people sat and watched the person who was hung. Suppression and control is not healthy. It cuts people off from our collective humanity. It doesn't serve as the expansion of us all. And I thought that was interesting. We need community. We cannot solve this on our own. Where is that judgment-free community? It, it made me think this is why we created AI parenting, is to create that community so that people could, could grow and learn together. Dealing with trauma will cost you, as will not dealing with it. Um, Antoinette said she had this trauma bond um, that she had in her own marriage. And she had to leave her marriage in order to, it was costing her health. Um, it was this fear, this fear of doing the work. And some of her statements were very empowering. She said, like, it's your birthright to have the resources for healing. You are worthy of healing and you deserve healing and it is your right to have it. And so a lot of parenting is about trauma and re-experiencing that trauma. Like when we speak to our children about the trauma that we experienced as a child, we also need to see if that's still happening. Uh, do what we need to do in order to protect like we do what we need to do in order to protect our kids. We have to ask like body, like for the physical body or, or nature, like what, what does the seed need? Right? Like, it, like what do we need in order to flourish? We need protection in order to flourish. So for Antoinette, she said that it took a while uh, for the grandparents to have calmed themselves. Um, but sometimes when you can talk about like, hey, this caused me trauma, uh, those can give an opportunity for them to shine again in the relationship. But you may need to pause. I think she had to take like a year off uh, in order to get to that state. So when it comes to words that we need to learn in school, I asked this question specifically to Antoinette, which was the, one of the beauties of having it live. 
Uh, she said that we need to learn the, like more about trauma. We need to have a better vocabulary around our feelings. How do we describe and talk about our feelings and what we're going through? We need to have better words around our emotion and our embodiment of those emotions, or maybe our disembodiment when we are suppressing those emotions. So that we can give this flavor around trauma and make it feel normal. Like it, she's describing the body is this place to study how the body experiences trauma and how the emotions experience trauma. Letting people know that trauma doesn't mean forever. There's post-traumatic stress, PTSD, uh, post-traumatic stress, PTSD, yeah. But there's also post-traumatic growth. The more we express and complete, the more we move to post-traumatic growth. Uh, she said that there's self-healing and then there's collective healing. We, we talked about this before. And the work isn't complete without both of them. So doing things in the community helps get healing through uh, the vulnerable sharing of the others. So when other people, like let's say you're in a community and people are, are sharing, like honestly, man, I'm going through some really, like these are the things that I'm really going through. That can bring healing, not only to yourself, but it brings healing to other people. Some people may not have a community um, and maybe they've, they're afraid or they've been wounded in the past by their community. Uh, so our natural trauma response is to isolate. It's to avoid people. And so we need to ask the question, who is the community that we attach to? Does this community have the integrity that we're looking for. And if not, we've got to leave. We've got to make that decision that we are worthy of that healing. We are worthy of reparation. We are worthy of great mental health. And acknowledging that we, by as parents, even unconsciously, are contributing to trauma through what we do or, and how we naturally react, how we were raised. Uh, practicing repair and understanding what repair looks like and restore this integrity with people. Like we have high expectations for people, we trust other people. We, we, we have this integrity with people. Um, one of the things that Antoinette said is that people are reading themselves into a frenzy and it becomes this only performative act. Don't be afraid, like, like me, like put your foot in your mouth, <laughs> be a pioneer, right? Be vulnerable, make mistakes, learn and repair. Activism without action is just acting. Uh, Ira X, who was a presenter prior to uh, Antoinette Cooper, said that we need to lean into action. Yeah, we all make mistakes. Um, an example that she showed was speaking about the LGBTQ2 community. But we are learning, like, we're not perfect. We need to lean into that. Yeah, maybe what she said caused some harm, but we can correct those things. We can apologize for that. Yeah, we can feel embarrassed. Uh, but there's plenty of relationships where we've been a hot mess. And if we're doing this work, we're going to be making mistakes. And that's, that's a good part of it. And so her message, Antoinette Cooper's message was commit to creating the world that you want, where everyone has the full experience of self-expression. It's this paradigm shift from conquering and conquest to connection and divinity. And so lots of words, lots of complicated stuff. I don't know if it's making sense, but to me, um, her message of you're worthy, you're not going to get it right, right at the beginning. And this, this healing, this process of healing is this having this vocabulary around it, normalizing it, making it something that we talk about, and it's okay, is very important in 
I have my own trauma that I have to deal with as well. 